so thank you everybody for joining me for a, a new all access. I'm sitting here with Steve Jablonski once again. Uh, Steve, how are you doing? Thanks so much for uh, for joining. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. So it's been a while since we chatted. Last time we chatted, I think it was at your studio. We we're talking about Skyscraper, uh, Skyscraper and um, you have a new movie out, Red Notice, which uh, congratulations. I mean, biggest launch of Netflix uh, on their platform of history. Like, so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, it's, a, it's no small film, I guess you could say. Not at all. I mean, and I, I absolutely love the score. So before we dive into that, um, I'd love to, um, you know, you, you got to reconnect with Ross and Marshall Thurber on this one. And, you you know, throughout your career, you've built lasting relationships with uh, with directors like Michael Bay and Peter Berg and others. So I was just curious to just picking your brain. Um, you When you work over the course of several times, you know, several times with a director, how does that relationship evolve over that time and uh does it i mean obviously something's working creatively and it must be a rewarding experience um but is it exciting for you as a composer to build that kind of relationship and just get to kind of you know look back 10 years in the rearview mirror and go wow look at all we did together you know type of things yeah. like that yeah that's no, a good question it is definitely rewarding and exciting and i think the best part about it is the communication gets a lot uh, clearer <clears throat> or more Short concise. Hands, yeah. <laughs> um, when you're first working with someone, you don't know, like just from a very basic level, what kind of sounds they like, or is there mm. going to be a particular sound that Michael Bay likes that maybe Rawson would think, what is that? You know, that's too yeah. this or too that. And so that uh, I kind of learned my way through that on Red Notice. I, I'm sorry, uh, Skyscraper. Right. Kind of what what his uh, style was and. Uh, so we sort of had a shorthand once we got to this, even though this movie is quite a bit different than that one. Very so different. It was sort of a, a bit of a relearning for both of us, trying to figure out what we wanted to do with this movie, how he wanted it to feel. Uh, but but yeah, it was nice to already, it always is nice to already know the person. And so Right, but it also it. must be exciting to, you know, comparatively, I mean, you I loved your score for Bloodshot, which um you got to... I work with Dave Wilson, who was, mm -hmm. was his uh, featured debut as a as a director. Yeah. So talk about the the opposite end, where you get to start a new relationship like that and work with somebody brand new. And even for him, like I would imagine, if I was a novice director, I would lean more into the veterans that are around me. Did did you find yourself him leaning into you more, or was he really confident in what he knew and what he wanted? And what was it like working with him? Oh, he's a great guy, and it was it's. I always tell directors that I work with for the first time that how, and I mean this, how much of an honor it is that they would trust me with such a big task, with such a big right. part of their film, because they don't know me. They've listened to stuff I've done, I guess, but it's a huge leap of faith to, to hire any composer or any person who's going to contribute to your film. And it it's always means a lot when it's someone you don't know. But Dave had... Uh, apparently was a big fan of the, some of the scores I'd written and had me in mind. So he kind of already knew what I did and he sort of knew what he, he, he knew what he wanted, but he also, yeah. like this being his first big film, he's like, what are you, you know, what do you do on a scene like this in a Transformers movie? Or, you know, how's it going to sound and this and that? He's, he's very experienced with his, he had a he's career done a ton of trailers. Effects, right? yeah. 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 Visual effects and trailers, a lot for video games. Some of, video game trailers that I had seen and was a huge fan of and didn't realize he had done them until later on. But so he had a great eye and he would always say, I don't know about music and how to do it, but he always, his direction and comments on the music, you know, proved that he totally knew about music and knew what he wanted. So then, uh, so yeah, we, we it very quickly fell into a groove and, and, and he trusted me and I trusted all, all of his ideas were great. And he was clearly yeah. a good, it was storytelling was important to him and it wasn't just visual effects and, and all that stuff. And plus he's just a good guy. I've been to his house and he had a barbecue at his house. It was, which is always nice. You know? Yeah, that's great. And the, and the film, I mean, the film came out, I think right at the head of the pandemic, it was yeah. February, 2020, but I mm -hmm. want to, I want to talk about it a little bit because I really enjoyed what you did with it. And it had, these I love the way you did these kind of like big brooding kind of heavy tracks but also you did these great melodic uh, rhythmic stuff that you're known for these action arcs and stuff so what was it like bring, because it's based on a, on a comic I believe and mm -hmm. starting this new character that maybe some people have never seen before what was it like building right. a soundscape for a, 
a new action hero like that. Yeah, that was cool. I have to admit, I hadn't heard of him, the character before. And the first introduction to it was Dave Wilson, the director, put together this. It was almost like a, I don't even know what you call it. it he, he was sitting at his desk and he had like a PowerPoint thing and clips from this was before he had made the film. And I think it was what he was how he was selling it to studios to get them to make it. And it was so detailed and the colors, he talked about the colors and the emotion and all this stuff. So just based on that alone, I had kind of an, a good idea what he wanted. Um, and then we sat down and, and talked and, and we talked about this not being your typical superhero. Right. And if we did a big, uh, you know, fanfare horn theme, it would kind of be not, not the right thing. Not right. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, so I started playing with rhythm. That's where I started on that one, just because of, uh, there was some kind of rhythmic element to the things he was showing me with the little nanites, they're called, that are coursing through his veins, and they, they start getting faster and faster as he starts working up into his frenzies or whatever. So we, And he liked that idea. He really liked, liked the rhythmic aspects of it. So we built on that and, and yeah, kept this themes very simple because you know it, it, he is Vin and Bloodshot are both big brooding simple sort of characters with a yeah yeah very clear mission and <laughs> and again you didn't want to get too flowery with the orchestration right. or the melodies we did as you mentioned get more melodic with the KT character the female yes yeah in yeah the film uh and um but even there we didn't want to get like romantic with her we just wanted to play her sort of because he's got the shots of her swimming underwater. She can breathe mm -hmm. underwater and all this stuff. Um, and that theme in particular was fun because I got to turn it into sort of more of an action theme towards the end when she blows up the whole facility. Right. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's always fun starting from scratch and figure, figuring out things that may or may not work. And Yeah, absolutely. So like talking about, you know, starting, I mean, you talked about, you, you know, you and Ross had to kind of start and figure out what Red Notice is. So let's jump into Red Notice, which, right. I mean, this is a fun caper heist film. And I really loved how you really leaned into the genre with it. And, and your score just, it, it's definitely you, but it also has like this kind of Mancini little like flair to oh, it as thanks. well. <laughs> so talk about finding that sound and, and what were the initial discussions with the music? And did you know right off the bat that we're going to go with kind of the jazzy sounds and kind of, kind of really play to the genre a bit? Uh, I'll be not really I when I first well, the first thing that happened Rawson sent me the script and he said just read it and didn't tell me anything about it and let me know what you think and it felt like a big sort of action adventure movie yeah and so that's what I told him I said you know that's how it feels and I think you, know, you can have big themes in this orchestra and he's like great perfect that's what I'm thinking so but as we got into it <clears throat> it was a tricky balance trying to find where to play the comedy yeah. and how much to play the comedy and how serious to play the action. There were so many discussions just like, oh, maybe if I add a little, one instrument in this scene will make it a little bit lighter if that's what you think this needs. It, it got to that level of detail, like, yeah. Where Ross would be like, that's it, it's good. It just feels a little too dark. Or, you know, I don't want the audience to ever be taken out of the, the fun of this. So we, we went kind of around quite a bit. And uh, it's all sort of a blur because it was, it was a long, <laughs> long process. But I think. I can imagine. I just, I just remember these discussions of like, for those who've seen it, there's a scene where Gal Gadot is torturing. Dwayne Johnson to get information out of him or torturing him to get information out of Ryan Reynolds. And the initial approach was simple, but really dark, you know, kind of just menacing. And, and it was always Ross. Was like, yeah, it, it, that's the right way to do it. But I don't know. I just, I'm afraid of playing this too dark. So I thought, what, what, what would lighten this up? So I added just one little bit of pizzicato strings playing through it, which is generally you think of pizzicato as, you know, I don't know, cartoony or right. like, whoop, 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 that kind of stuff. And uh, he's like, oh, that's it. Perfect. That was great. Because it lightened it up just enough. Yeah. 
where the audience isn't like, oh my God, is she actually going to murder this guy? Or, and there, there were, you know, a dozen situations like that where we, um, but thematically, yeah. the, the, the first things I wrote were, were pretty much what he wanted. He did say, funny you mentioned Mancini, he said, I wanted, the first theme I wrote was the thing that's called, the track that's called Red Notice on the, on the, on CD, the album. Yeah. On the album. And uh, he was, now it's like his favorite theme ever. He, but then he said, yeah, it's good. I just, I don't, is it too Mancini? Is it too <laughs> this or too that? I said, well, you know, we'll just live with it. And let me try to put it in the film and see how it sits and, by the end, yeah, he loved it, but he was. I mean, I think it worked so well where you planted it, where it had a little bit of a kind of a, a kind of a classic feel, but then it felt I mean, you really modernized and it felt like a modern adventure oh, cool. kind of action score. And the way you kind of weaved it through and it was I thought oh, it worked thanks. out really well. I really enjoyed right, the score. Thanks. I had a lot of oh, fun cool. with it. Thanks. Yeah, that was the goal. <laughs> I'm glad you picked up. That was the goal to. To make it feel like not that we're necessarily doing the Pink Panther or something from that. Exactly. Era, but we're yeah. saying yeah we love those films and this has a bit of that but we're trying to do our own thing no it, it really felt like you let loose in the third act and and just had a blast and it was, <laughs> it was <laughs> fun yeah <laughs> so but and, uh, funny when you mention all that because I, yeah I, I can't imagine i'm sure people are like oh yeah just make it fun and light but it's also you there the score does have you have to have the stakes as well you have to make it yeah. serious and feel like there is stakes to it it's not just like you know happy go lucky all the time mm -hmm. so yeah i mean oh absolutely that must, yeah, so I mean, you described it all already, but just I guess finding that tone and especially how it shifts. I mean, just the fact that you had to make a, a torture scene a little bit lighter. I think. Yeah. <laughs> the challenges that you had to encounter. So. <laughs> yeah, it was fun though, you know, and and Rossin was always so uh, so uh, patient. I guess you know there, there'd be days, and I, we were all patient because there were days where he'd say this was great, and then a week later I'd hear that. Rawson's not so sure about that cue anymore. So like we, again, this is the thing with COVID. But it was all over FaceTime or Zoom yeah. or whatever. So I would just text him and go, "Hey, what? So what? What do you think about that cue?" And it, it was usually this sort of thing. The tone, just he's like, "Yeah, it was good at the time, but now maybe there's a way to lighten it." It was usually lightening it. I have to say, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, maybe, yeah. I may have took taken things a little too seriously to begin with, and we backed off on a lot of that. And, uh, but you're right, keeping the stakes high, especially as you get further in, maybe we got, I get a little more uh, heavy with the orchestra. Or Yeah, well, I loved, I mean, but also you have these three leads, which are three super charismatic, I mean, they're known yeah. for being, having action shots, but also comedic chops as well. So how, as a composer, when you have these three very strong leads, how, how much does that pull the music? I mean, are you, the performances kind of, like, are they leading the way the score is going and the way, because, you, I mean, they're the ones that are on the screen really carrying the film. Uh, yeah, for sure. I think that goes for most films. But yeah, in this one in particular, they're so the sh strong characters, like the Bishop, for example, Gal Gadot's character. I don't know if I'm, I'm never sure if I'm pronouncing her name right, but. <laughs> yeah, Gal Gadot, yeah. <laughs> okay. Because um, I've heard it pronounced other ways by people who would probably know, but I stick with Gal Gadot until I'm. <laughs> yeah, that's what I say, Gal Gadot. So. <laughs> Uh, I wrote her original theme was a bit more flamboyant. I wrote it for a solo violin that was sort of, you know, heavy vibrato and more flamboyant, I guess. And it was in there for a while and we started thinking it, it made her character a little too silly or mm. like the audience would not take her as serious because the theme was working too hard. Right. And she didn't need it because she was already really just had a very strong character on her own. She didn't need my help. So I took it off, took it off the uh, violin and just put it on a little bell sound and much simpler. And that ended up being what was in the film. Um, yeah, her character was probably the hardest to find the right tone. But the other, uh, Dwayne and, and Ryan, they're, they're just doing such big, crazy stuff. Yeah. I was able to, incorporate that red notice theme that was sort of there they had a couple of themes for them but that was sort of their adventure kind of doing fun things theme <laughs> yeah i mean um, the way it, it it opens up at the end and the way I, mean, I just love the way you bring that theme in and just cool. just kind of a nice little touch to the one of the, the kind of big action arcs that you that i really love for me oh, as well <laughs>
Great. No, it was so, fun. Yeah. So talking about kind of action music, just in general, I mean, I'm sure we touched about this on our past discussions as well, but as someone who's scored your, you know, surplus of, of machines fighting and all these mm -hmm. different battles and car chases, oh, yeah. and all that stuff, how do you, I mean, how do you approach an action scene after you've done it dozens of times and how do you make it fresh? I mean, at, at this point in your career, do you go, oh crap, how do I make a car chase fresh? How do I make a, a one-on-one -on -one fight fresh again? Like, how, do you, like, I mean, do you look at the scene as like it has its own arc? Do you, I mean, right. just focus on the characters? I mean, what's your approach, I guess, for action? That's fun. I, I have to admit, I don't actually think of it that way. I just, hmm. uh, just start messing around with stuff. I, I, after I've written it, and I've heard other composers say this, so I think I'm not alone. After I've finished a score, it really just goes out of my head. Mm. Like I obviously I know the themes or whatever, but the, the whole thing just kind of leaves me. So I start like a red notice. I'll just start with a blank mind, or at least yeah. I try to. And I just do things that feel kind of right for the film. And uh, this, because it was a little bit more fun, you know, and, and that some of the action music actually started more fun than what you heard in the film, mm. more like, more like drum kit kind of things, which, which Rawson was absolutely loving for the longest time. And then he thought, oh, maybe it's, again, maybe we don't want the audience to not take it seriously. Right. Like the, the, the chase, this, when he's, Ryan is cr climbing all over the scaffolding and pushing people off in the in the early in the film that was like a big jazz drummer fest with uh, a lot of the notes the music was the same but the percussion was uh much more jazzy and fun and just because it felt like he was messing messing with these guys and he had no problem so we thought let's just go full fun yeah and he said mm. rosson thought maybe that was it was just too fun so we ditched that percussion made it a little more heavy you know serious and then he was into it so it's partly a, it's well a party it's always a team effort just uh, trying things and seeing what you know the director thinks and yeah uh so it's a it's a collaboration between it but yeah i don't specifically think like i can't do what i did before mm, uh, i do yeah. get bored with sounds a lot so i don't ever go I always try to find new stuff and record new stuff just because I'm like, oh, that, that I use, I know that sounds so well from, from the, I remember that I may, I may forget all the scores I've done, but so sounds when I'm sitting in my computer, which is right here off the pointing, I, I know immediately, I'm like, oh yeah, I use that one and whatever. And I just, I can't, I don't want to use that again. There are some that I always use, but <laughs> for the most part, I try not to, I try to find a little bit of a different vibe my brother john played some drums on this so there's oh, some, nice. new, some new drum sounds in there that i always try to do a little bit new something for the yeah the percussion was fantastic stuff. in this film i, I Ooh, really nice. yeah yeah um so i uh, talk i mean you talked about working in covid and, and talking you know having meetings on you know texting and all that stuff so talk i mean we were living in this new time right now so yeah. as a composer I'm sure you're isolated usually, but I mean, now that everybody is isolated, what was it like working on a film like this during the pandemic? That was uh, one of, if not the most challenging part of Red Notice, particularly for the director, because I know he really likes, you know, personal interaction as yeah. a director does. That's what he does for a living, just communicates with his team and actors on the set. And we were all... Well, we, we, I started this before the pandemic and he was shooting and he had to stop production, obviously, like everyone did. And he had to rewrite mm -hmm. several large sequences that had previously included lots of people in the scene, <laughs> yeah, like the, the museum <laughs> thing. I don't know how he probably doesn't care if I say that, like the museum chase. So it was a, that was an outdoor chase originally through the streets oh, wow. of Rome. And that was it became not possible under the oh, yeah. guidelines. I mean, Italy shut down. Like, I mean, that yeah. was, it was, he was hard hit. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was going to, yeah. So it, that had to be rewritten and a couple other things. Uh, but then when everything picked up again, we were still all at home and the film editors were at home and we were just, the technology 
as far as the remote listening and watching of picture was okay, but there was always a chunk of time during every meeting where something would stop working. Yeah. Somebody's audio would go out. There was always delays and just, it was not optimal, even though it was better than nothing. But, and over the course of the pandemic, people have the, the, those bits of software have improved greatly. There are a bunch of them I've used now at this point, and they're actually really cool, you know. But, yeah, um, yeah. So now it seems like sort of that's how you do it. But, but early on, Red Notice was the one that that I personally was working on when everything was at its worst. And, uh, and I know Ross just it affected him. He didn't like it. And there was a point though, where he's like, can you come over to the cutting room? And like, we almost kind of had to sneak, sneak around. And he said, we, we, cause they had just opened the cutting room and they only allowed mm. two film editors and Ross and three people. That was it. Could set foot in that cutting room, uh, masks at all times, and all that. Yeah. And then, a couple of weeks later, we managed to squeeze me in there so we could, for the first time, sit down and go through everything I'd written and discuss it. And it was like huge because I could watch Ross and, and yeah, see what how he's reacting. And I, you know, I know him well enough. To go, oh, he didn't like that just from his face. This is not something you can do on these Zoom things nearly as well. But but we're all happy that we got through it. And he he had it the most difficult he just said it was really really hard to go film the second half of the movie under the covid uh, restrictions and a lot of the scenes where you see Dwayne in particular I saw I, I scored some scenes where he was in the room by himself talking and they just digitally had to put in the other 50 people that are supposed to be in the room behind him at the same time so it was a lot of logistical things that and a new a new task for special effects artists that they have to yes popul populate rooms now. That's a task that we have to use CGI as a tool now. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I'm impressed. Now I saw it for the first time at the premiere, at being completely finished visually. I, even when I was working on it, it never was quite finished visually. And yeah, they're they're it's pretty magical what they can do. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I wanted to close off. You know, you you you've you've done. You know, some films for Netflix now, uh, Spencer Confidential, you did with Peter Berg and and now this Red Notice. And I know there was a big discussion that came up when, you know, we're in the pandemic now and streaming mm -hmm. kind of took over and a lot of filmmakers and composers spoke out about how the, you know, the proper ways to see in the theaters. But I'm just curious what your take is on streaming and right. how it's kind of becoming more, more part of our lives even before mm -hmm. the pandemic and right. how you as a creator and an artist feel about people watching yeah. your film, maybe not and the best speakers mm -hmm. and the best, you know, TV <laughs> setup. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm more of a, I know a lot of people might not share this opinion, but I'm more of a fan of giving people options. You know, I'd love if they all went to the Chinese theater in Hollywood and sat in this, or like, uh, what's our, some of my favorite theaters in LA where I know the sound is just unbelievable and the speakers are tuned and it's going to sound, but that's, you know, it's just not realistic. I have kids, my wife and I barely go to the film movies anymore. And I, I understand that Netflix and all these other things, it just makes it more convenient. And if red notice in particular, I, the amount of people that have come up to me or emailed me or texted me in the last week since it came out saying, oh, we saw Red Notice. It was amazing. And I didn't know you worked on it. We saw your name. And that's so great. People from high school, the amount that didn't happen nearly as much with maybe with a big Transformers or something, but not. It was another level. And that's just because everybody has Netflix and everybody watches Netflix and there it was it popped up on their screens saturday night and they're like, oh let's let's check that out and there that's to me that's the good side of it like so many more people saw this i think than would have if it was only in the theaters um, yeah 100 percent. and i'm i'm okay with and i understand the you know all the the chris nolan and all these they're they really want to maintain the purity of the oh, theater the pre experience. preserve the theatrical experience yeah it's very important i mean i think it's yeah. important as well and then to yeah. have the option i think I, I agree with you 100 percent having that option and like yeah. i went to go see dune 
in the biggest IMAX mm-hmm. I could find. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's just, yeah. Yeah, see, yeah, as a film lover, you knew that that was a film that, you know, I should probably check that out first in a, in a theater. And that's where I, I haven't watched on HBO or wherever it is because I, I would not, I want to watch it in a theater. Um, and it like, and yeah, I, I, well, as much as I'd like people to go see Red Notice in the theater, I'm glad that all of these people that reached out to me saw it because it was on Netflix. And I said that to my wife last night. I said, wow, this is, that sort of opened my eyes a little bit. I have to say just yeah, yeah. the amount wow. of people was crazy. I'd go to my kids, drop my kids off at school and all the parents were like, hey, Red Notice was awesome. I'm like, what is going on? Just because it's, it's streaming is where people watch things now. I don't think it's a bad thing, you know. I don't. Well, I'll, I'll let you know that I do have a Dolby Atmos setup, and oh, I watched nice. it. I knew you Dolby did. Atmos and an <laughs> OLED TV. So I, I, I don't it. even have Dolby Atmos. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have the, the upward firing speakers, that one that kind of like come back down. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. So, but it it, I, it sounds great. It's fantastic. I, I want to redo. We do have a cool theater setup in our house. It's sort of we have a high ceiling bedroom and a, a loft that looks back to a what used to be a blank wall and I, I remembered my brother when I were up there I go wouldn't it be cool to watch a Lakers game on that wall I probably told you the story but, uh and then it, that led to me putting a screen there and it's a huge screen I don't even know how big it is but and we have a projector so we don't have all nice, Dolby Atmos nice. but it's it's yeah, yeah. that's where we that's our home theater where we do our watching but but uh but awesome I'm glad you you have a sweet sound set i think a lot of people do have pretty decent yeah i think that's the one thing i was like if we're going to be home a lot i need to be able to watch things a little bit better and now that yeah. i'm not sharing walls with anybody i can really get that subwoofer yeah. going and that's not, cool that's not awesome <laughs> glad yours... you guys got a house congratulations yeah thank you <laughs> well uh i wanted to you know wrap up now and and just thank you again for your time and sure. it's so great to catch up and 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 uh I'm, you know as always i'm always a huge fan of yours steve and and oh, thank uh, you, sir and congratulations on what an amazing release for for red notice and in theater oh, man, thanks very much and at home so <laughs> thanks for inviting me on it's always a pleasure <laughs>